Hey. So first off, uh, sorry about this weird lighting. I didn't have a cool place to film this video, so I was like, hmm, I know, I'll just sit in front of this wallboard stuff. But then that looked boring too, so then that's how this ended up happening. I don't know. It's kind of cool. It's giving me Stranger Things vibes. But anyways, I'm assuming you guys read the title, so you know what this is going to be about. A lot of you might be returning viewers from either TikTok or Here Alone, so you might already know some of the things I'm going to say today. But for those of you who might be new here, uh, I'm just gonna run you guys through the timeline real fast before we really dive into this video. I had scoliosis and kyphosis. I've had a lot of people ask me how I knew I had this and like how long I had it and everything. I don't know. But what I do know is I noticed it in 2016 when trying to make this stupid, like, found footage ghost film. There was this one shot, I look terrible in it, but there's this one shot where I bent over it, it was just there. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. Immediately I diagnosed myself and I was like, oh, I have scoliosis. And I went around saying that for a while, um, until finally I had it actually checked by a doctor and they 100% confirmed that I had some scoliosis. But they also told me that I had something called kyphosis. Actually, I had way more kyphosis than I had scoliosis. For those of you who don't know, because I didn't, <laughs> um, scoliosis is what you see from the front. So that's what causes people to be like, you know, kyphosis is what you see from the side. And I had a lot of kyphosis and it made me look like the hunchback. By the way, it was around 2017 when I figured that out, like for sure. Um, and of course I immediately made a video about it called, I have scoliosis. I have scoliosis. Ew. Um, I will admit, throughout all of this, I've thrown scoliosis in front of it, like, almost every single time, even though the scoliosis was, like, barely anything. Only because, who the fuck knows what kyphosis is? <laughs> um, yeah. It seems like once I started to realize all of this, everyone else was realizing it too. Like, I... I would just be minding my own business trying to get a drink of water from the water fountain and people would come up to me and be like, are you okay? I was bent over painting once and someone was like, does that hurt? And I'm like, huh? <laughs> so I don't know when I started to develop this. It could have been in my life for a long time and I just never noticed. But I don't know, it just feels like it just came out of nowhere. Maybe from bad posture or something? I literally don't know. But another thing I should mention is, during that 2017 doctor visit, they made it very clear that there wasn't anything they could do because it wasn't bad enough. They said I didn't need a brace, they said I didn't need surgery, literally, they just said I was fine. Uh-huh. <laughs> it wasn't bad enough, but I literally, looked like a mountain every time I bent over and had lots of back pain. I couldn't stand for too long, I couldn't sit for too long, I couldn't do anything for too long without it just hurting. Um, but anyways, around 2019, when I was doing the play Rumors, I did a, I, ha I went to the doctors again. Honestly, I don't remember why, I don't know why I had a back appointment when they already told me there was nothing they could do. I know at one point, they were really worried about me because they were like, well, there's this disease and the symptoms are being big, uh, messed up spine, double jointed, heart problems, and tall. I was like, okay, cool. Literally everything about me, they were like, is a symptom of this thing. I don't remember what it was. Um, spoiler alert, I didn't have it. <laughs> but 
yeah, I don't know why I was at the doctor's for my back, but I was. And met a really cool dude called, called, named Dr. Anderson. And he immediately offered surgery. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yes, I loved the idea of possibly getting rid of this hump, changing my appearance, um, possibly getting that pain to go away. But I also just really wanted to mark surgery off my bucket list. <laughs> I feel bad for it. <laughs> like it's definitely not the only reason. They, there were, there was reasonable reasons for me to do it. But just the fact that that's still one of the reasons makes me feel bad. Also, just the idea of being able to vlog it. <laughs> I do not suggest getting surgery just for the hell of it. Don't be me, <laughs> but <laughs> do what's right for you. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, I said, sure. I was skipping out on play practice for that doctor's appointment. Um, so afterwards, I just went back to school Everyone was like, how did it go? And I was like, they're gonna cut me open in a couple months. And they were like, oh. So yeah, July 16th, 2019. Three years ago today, I woke up really early, had all my stuff packed, had all my cameras ready, and I headed to the hospital. And they performed surgery on my spine for eight hours. With all of that out of the way, basically right now, I just want to explain everything that happened after those eight hours, all the way up to this point. Because like I said, I did vlog this, and you know, that video did pretty well. I had a lot of people messaging me, asking me questions, because they wanted to do this too. And I just didn't explain much very well in that video. And even now, three years later, as people ask me questions on TikTok and stuff, I, s I still feel like I'm not 100% giving the best answers. I don't know. I just feel like I need a video that just runs through it all. I will still gladly answer those questions on TikTok and stuff, but for those who are a little bit more curious and just, just want the whole rundown, I can send them here. Now, if you are just like really, really curious about all of this, whether it be because you're planning on getting this yourself or you're just a curious person, I would highly recommend watching my vlog first, which I'll, I'll link in the description. And maybe if you're okay with surgery footage, I also have a video of them actually performing the surgery. It's only... It's only like a minute of footage, but it still exists. That will be linked down there. That that will be linked down there too. Um, and then just come back here as kind of like a sequel to that video. When I woke up, I kind of just felt nothing. Uh, obviously, I was on all that medicine and stuff. That first night was honestly a breeze. I think I might remember it being kind of hot. But for the most part, I just slept. <laughs> Even though I just got done sleeping for eight hours, I wanted more sleep. Sometime during the night, I woke up and I did throw up. Um, a nurse had a bag ready for me and everything. But other than me throwing up, most of my time in the hospital was fine. Um, there was like a day or two, maybe even just a day, um, where I was just in like a lot of just a stiff pain which sucked but for the most part the nurses acted very surprised at how I was doing um, I've said this on TikTok before but um, I don't know if they were just being nice and just like you know hyping me up or whatever or if I genuinely was just doing better than other people I don't know, but I was definitely doing good. So good, in fact, that there were nights where I slept on the floor like it was nothing. Had my entire back ripped open. Had power drills screwing metal into my spine and stuff. 
And here I am sleeping on the floor two days later. It was mostly because that hospital bed was not comfortable. I really thought it would be. I was really excited to sleep in a hospital bed and then it was like, <clears throat> floor, here I come. I think I might've been in the hospital for like six days. I could have went home sooner if I could have just pooped. <laughs> they needed me to poop for whatever reason, I don't remember. They did a lot of interesting things to get that to happen too. Relax. I am. You know it. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> But eventually I did poop, and I went home. But anyways, I'm gonna try to explain how it felt in the best way that I can. I would say maybe like 70 to 80% of the time I didn't actually feel pain. I just felt like something heavy was on my shoulders, like my spine wanted to collapse. I know that might sound scary. <laughs> like I said, it wasn't painful. It just was like, it was like having a backpack full of books, but instead of it being on your shoulders, it was just attached to your spine, you know? I mean, you don't know, you never had it, but. <laughs> Everything just felt heavy. Now, like I said, my actual spine, most of the time, didn't hurt. But what did hurt was this thing called pressure, pressure sores. I think that's what they called it, but basically when they have you on the table during surgery, they have these things that hold up certain parts of your body. And since you're laying on those things for a really long time, eight hours for me, it leaves you sore afterwards. So for a good amount of time after the surgery, I had red, like, looks like rashes, not a rash, but it was just really red in those areas. One of them was on my thighs, and that one was probably the most annoying one. And the pain of those honestly lasted for a while. Like, I think that went in past August. Another pain that I felt that, like, wasn't spine-related, um, the doctor swore that it had nothing to do with the surgery. But I feel like it did, because I didn't develop it until the surgery. This is kind of TMI, but like, my balls hurt. <laughs> like it was like this weird nerve pain that just would just come in and out. And that happened for almost a year after the surgery. I don't want to scare you with it because he didn't even think it had anything to do with the surgery. So maybe I was just a weird case or something, but I don't know. <laughs> It definitely wasn't comfortable. Now, I think one of the reasons why the pressure sores on my legs hurt so badly is also this thing to where if you sit for too long, your legs aren't getting the circulation that they need. Um, and I was in a chair a lot, <laughs> just sitting in the living room watching TV and stuff, just trying to heal. So not only did my thighs hurt from the things they had me on during surgery, but they were also just pulsing because all they wanted to do was get up and move. And I did. I walked around the mall several times um, just to get some exercise into my legs and get that blood pumping again, um, which my spine did just fine during. Um, like I said before, everything just kind of just felt heavy here. Luckily, school wasn't that far away. I was able to walk a little bit more, but we'll get to school in a second. Now I know I keep on saying that my spine really wasn't an issue, but obviously there were times where it was. Um, so let me go over that real fast. I'd say it hurt the most when I was trying to sleep. I'd spend like an hour each night just trying the best I could to get in the perfect position and just stay that way for the rest of the night so it didn't hurt. I found that hard surfaces were the best, or I guess I should say firm surfaces, because it gave the most support for my spine. So squishy stuff was out of the question, um, but I had like 20 pillows on the bed, each one serving a different purpose to hold up this part of my body or that part of my body. Yeah, 
It definitely wasn't fun, but anytime I moved wrong, it was a sharp pain. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. I feel like everyone knows what a sharp pain is, but it's just like a sharp pain that's in your spine area, so it just feels like it's worse than a normal sharp pain, if that makes sense. Like, I didn't feel like I was being stabbed or anything, it was just... <clears throat> <laughs> Putting on clothes for a while was also very difficult. Um, I... I can't remember if it necessarily hurt. I probably did. At least a little. But I just remember every time I would bend over to try to put on a sock or something, it would just like... It would feel like my spine wanted to collapse or snap. Obviously it wasn't going to, it was just the feeling. Um, so doing stuff like that took a while. It might have taken me like 10 extra minutes, maybe 15 every morning to get dressed than it did before the surgery or even now because I just had to take things slow. By the way, this is random and I'm just mentioning it because I thought it was interesting but I'm sure other people probably like, you didn't know that? But wounds heal so quickly. Like the actual skin part, I don't know why I thought it wouldn't, but like my skin was completely like sealed up before I ever even got home. Like I was scared that if I moved the wrong way, the glue would just come apart and I would open up like a human change purse or something. But no. Now before I move on to August, school, um, I do want to tell a story about one of my days after surgery. And I don't think I've told this anywhere. I know I made a Facebook post, but like, y'all don't have me on Facebook. This and another thing I'm about to tell later was like one of the scariest days I had after surgery. It was the most miserable, it was the most frightening, it was the most exhausting, and it was all my fault. So one day, I don't know if this happened before school or if it happened during the summer, but my spine was just aching. Not a sharp pain, it was just aching. And I was like, God, I just wish I could just soak in some warm water, because maybe that will make me feel better. Because the shower's not gonna do much. Um, I love showers, but for quite a while after the surgery, they were kind of exhausting, just having to stand for so long. I was taking a lot of quick showers for a bit. But anyways, I get the great, wonderful idea to try and take a bath. So I run the water, and I slowly, slowly let myself into the water. With how difficult it was just to sit down, I should have known right then and there, this isn't a good idea. But I continued anyways. And by the way, when I take baths, I like to relax. I'm not a just sit there in the water type of person. I may lay completely down so the water is over everything but my head type of person. So I'm just laying there in the tub, full of water, in so much pain. I was probably only in there for like two minutes before I decided, yeah, this isn't gonna work. I go and put my hands up onto the sides of the tub, and I try to push myself up so I can just get out. I couldn't. You see, every time I tried to push up, it was... I don't know if straining's the right word. It was doing something to my spine. It did not feel good. It felt like it wanted to snap. I don't think it would have snapped if I would have just went for it. But that's what it felt like. And I didn't want to feel that way. So, I was laying there in the tub for over an hour trying to get out. I tried pulling myself up over and over and over again. Each time, my back just hurts more and more and more. It felt like the metal rods just want to rip out of my body. And on top of that, everything was wet. The porcelain was wet, I was wet. 
So, not only does it hurt a lot, but I can also feel myself slipping. Not just on my hands, but like my feet too, because they also have to like, you know, push me up, but like my feet are like, you know? Finally, after like an hour and 20 minutes of just being in the bathtub crying, I get the bright idea to reach over for the mat that's in the bathroom. It's like fuzzy or whatever. I was reaching for it and reaching for it, just crying. <laughs> Sorry. And then I finally get it. I put it under me to keep myself from slipping. And finally I get myself out. So yeah, that was scary. Let's just say I didn't take a bath for a really long time. A lot of showers. I was so scared I was gonna have to get help. <laughs> just being trapped in a bathtub, just naked, just barely able to move. Someone would have had to break down the door because it was locked. A couple side notes that I forgot to mention. One, I, I set off metal detectors. That's kind of the thing I've bragged about ever since the surgery, so sorry if I sound like a broken record. Um, but two, getting into cars was really difficult. I don't know why, but like just fresh out of surgery, it was really hard to bend down at all. So my head would just hit the top of the roof like trying to get in. And it was like, it was really annoying. I don't have that problem now. I guess my spine loosened or something, I don't know. Someone on TikTok said it had something to do with muscle memory. Like I had to relearn how to get into a car or something. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, school. I just had surgery a month ago. A really big surgery too. But here I am, still going to school. I was honestly really excited about it because other than like a few uncomfortable days after the surgery. I was pretty much fine. So I was excited to just walk up into school and be like, I had surgery a month ago and everyone just be like, wow, you're doing really good. But then also getting to tell people that my spine was made of metal and stuff. Like I was excited. I thought it was cool. Um, most of the day went pretty okay. Unfortunately, they did sign me up for weight class. <laughs> So I sat there, let the teacher talk about weights and stuff, and then I explained to him, hey, I'm not gonna be able to do this. Um, they didn't transfer me out of the class, I just kind of spent most of the year kind of just doing my own thing, sitting off to the side or doing their like uh, bike thing. I don't know what they're called, the exercise bikes? Yeah. I did a lot of that. But towards the end of the day, it did start to get to me. Um, in theater class, I don't remember what I did. I think I like st stood up wrong or sat down wrong, but it was just a, this immediate, just jolts of sharp pain all the way in me. Um, I, remember, I remember being really upset because I was like, how can I go this whole day going up to, up and down stairs, doing all of this stuff, and be perfectly fine, but then like, the chair is what fucks me up. Miss Young, the theater teacher, um, she let me sit in her teacher chair, you know, their comfortable chairs to like spin and stuff, you know? Um, which helped a lot, it was nice, I felt cool. I was also embarrassed, but you know, whatever. And then the very next class, I got to do the same thing. Um, she gave me her chair and everything and at that point I was just kind of dead. I was like People were like what's wrong with him and then someone else would be like he just had surgery a month ago And then they'd be like why is he here? I was about to talk about something because I thought it happened the first day But it actually happened a few days later um, Other than feeling like shit and having to use the teacher's chairs the first day of school was fine um a few days later, like August 16th, 
Um, one of my lights just died, so I don't know if that changed the lighting at all. I think it's darker now. Oh well. But like three days after the first day of school, I don't know what I did that day. I think it was just a normal day of school, but it was just a lot for my body to handle, or my spine to handle. And I just remember being in so much pain on that bus ride home, just wanting to cry. And the second I got off the bus and I got out of the view of everyone that was on it, I just sobbed all the way home because it was the most pain I was ever in after surgery. And it, even after that day, nothing topped that day. I guess it was just the results of three days of school after sitting in a chair all, for a month. Uh, but it was terrible. As soon as I got home, I called Melissa and I was like, this is the most pain I've ever been in. I don't have any hope that it's gonna get better. I'm so stupid for getting this surgery. I missed my fucked up spine. Yeah, not only did I have the sharpest pain in my lower back, my upper back, but my thighs were hurting. The rest of my leg was hurting. All the pressure spots were hurting. Everything was just hurting. And what I felt that day is what I expected to feel day one after surgery. Like it felt like I just had the surgery and I didn't. <laughs> yeah, that. Between that and what happened in the bathtub, those are probably the worst parts about all of this. Just those two days. Like obviously as a whole, everything starts to add up. Like the pain every night and like stuff like that. But like that's whatever. It, it sucks, it's annoying. I wanted it to end like so badly. But like I was still, I was still able to deal with it. Cause, Cause I mean, it's what I signed up for. And to be completely fair, it didn't feel as bad as I thought it would. But those two days, it was like everything that I should have felt leading up to those moments, just kind of built up in a suitcase. And then like it got so full, it just burst it open. Luckily the next day, I think I was fine. <laughs> now, as much as I would love to keep going through this like timeline of events from the last three years, after those first few months, there really wasn't, not much really happened, or at least nothing that's worth noting right here. Other than like my follow-up appointment two Octobers ago, they just kind of took x-rays of my spine to see if everything was healing correctly, and it was. My next appointment is in two years. Uh, it's the five-year appointment. But yeah, now I'm just gonna kinda go over um, different questions that I've gotten over the years and just really anything that I can think of and I apologize in advance. Um, if you couldn't tell, I didn't plan this video at all. I kinda just wanted to turn on the camera and just like ramble and talk to you guys. I'm realizing now I should have probably planned it out because I'm having a really hard time like getting everything out. So I apologize if this seems like all over the place, but I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to cover everything. But if I miss anything that you were hoping I'd talk about, feel free to just comment them or message me directly on Instagram if you don't feel comfortable being in the comments. I'm kind of just figuring this out and um, thinking of it as I go. One thing that I forgot to mention that I think is very important is the fact that being in cars for a while really, really, really sucked. Because every single fast turn, every single pothole did not feel great. <laughs> I remember before school started, I really wanted to get out. So I attended, I attended this outdoor movie event at my movie theater with a bunch of people from our theater department. And, um, I think that might have been the first day I noticed that my 
balls were hurting because I was just sitting there trying to watch Spider-Man into the multi... What the fuck was it called? It was the cartoon Spider-Man. I don't know what it was called. I don't remember. <laughs> with the one with Miles. I was just sitting there and I was just like, you know... It's kind of hurty. <laughs> Anyways, what was I saying? <laughs> ah, right. No, afterwards we had to take Dakota home and I had never been to her house before. At the time she lived in this trailer park and all of the roads were like bumpy and there were like um, speed bumps and th those roads were fucked. <laughs> so I was just sitting there just biting something as we were <laughs> In the last three years that has died down a bit. Um, it typically doesn't happen anymore, but there are still moments um, where we will hit a speed bump or something and or, or a pothole and there's like a really quick just pain. It, nothing like it was before. It's not like a sharp, sharp pain. It's just like, I don't know, it doesn't feel great. One thing that I've gotten asked a lot is what degree my spine was at. And I have to be honest, I don't know. Um, I would love to be able to give that answer, but that was just, it wasn't something that at the time I felt like, that I felt was important to learn or memorize. Like I was definitely told what it was, but I, I don't know, I was just kind of like, I felt like the way that my spine looked was enough to explain how bad my spine was. Like I didn't need to tell people what degree it was at or anything. So I don't know that, and I'm sorry. Obviously I've talked a lot about um, all the different like physical stuff that I've done since the surgery. Like being in plays, going to the mall and like walking around, you know, just everything. But I do think I should mention that I've done way more than that. Before the surgery I filmed a bunch of stuff. Like I filmed like short films and skits, I filmed like other things. So I, so when I got out of the surgery, all I, would, all I would have to do is edit those things and then post them. But then even after getting out of surgery, I realized there were things that I missed. So within like the first week of being home, I was already back in front of the camera pretending like I didn't just get out of surgery. Um, and I did those just fine. Let's talk about the plays a little bit more. Um, those had a lot of dancing. Now they're not like crazy like Broadway dancing like it's mediocre but like it was still a lot of movement. Um, a lot of running back and forth backstage. Not only that but I was on my feet a lot that final year of school because um, I am the kid with the camera so I'm out in the hallways and everything just walking around filming different news stories and everything. Um, the final two hours of school, every single day, we would hop on a bus and go to a completely different location and do stuff there. They sent us out to a carnival and everything to film that. I was also carrying a lot. Um, I don't know if I was supposed to. I think they gave me a timeline of like, you can carry stuff up to this amount of weight for this long and then after that you can upgrade to this. I don't remember how long I actually followed that. I think I followed it pretty well, but like I still was carrying a lot just in that first year. And then on top of that, making my own stuff at home, like the films and stuff that I do. Basically what I'm saying is, as torturous as it was sometimes, it didn't stop me from being able to live life. I obviously had to take a lot of breaks and stuff, but for the most part, people kind of just forgot that I had surgery, and a lot of the times I forgot too. Not for long. But if you're planning on getting the surgery, I'm sure your doctor will tell you this too, but in the case that they don't, um, Dr. Anderson, he made it very clear to me that I needed to move. Um, like I said earlier, obviously I did spend some time sitting down and that's why I had some leg problems. But I still got up and did things. A lot of things. Maybe more than I should have. Personally, I don't understand this, but he said the reason why I needed to move is because I will heal faster. Um, I'm sure someone might be able to explain that. 
Um, but yeah, apparently you're gonna heal a lot worse if you just rest. Um, I don't know, I don't understand it. I guess there's really not much more for me to say with that. It's pretty just straightforward, just you need to move. <laughs> He did also say though that most of the people he worked on were big dudes like me who were playing football. And he said that pretty much every single one of them were back to playing football within a couple months. Or maybe not, I don't know if it was a few months, but like he said they were back to playing football like almost immediately. Personally, I don't think I would have been able to do that. I don't play sports anyways, I hate sports. But I don't, I can't imagine getting tackled or something after having that done. Because for like two years, and even a little bit now every once in a while, even when I'm feeling my absolute best, like I don't have any pain or anything, just out of nowhere, just a slight like jolt of something, like sitting up too fast or something, it just really hurts for a second. It's just this sharp pain going, hello? Remember me? So I can't imagine playing football, but I'll take his word for it. Maybe someone who's more fit than me is able to do that, but I don't know. I feel like I would just pass away immediately if someone tackled me to the ground, even right now. To expand on that a bit more and give you a few examples of what I mean with the whole like jolt of pain. Um, I don't know if you've ever like put a foot down wrong or like, I don't know, like stepped in like maybe a hole or something while walking through a field or maybe stepped down from a crack on a sidewalk and it kind of feels weird. Stuff like that every once in a while will give me a sharp pain. Um, I have some footage of when it happened. Um, Isaac was supposed to like pick, pick me up. Um, in reality, I'm also just lifting myself to make it easier on him. That sent a sharp pain into me. <laughs> oh, fuck. Are you okay? <laughs> um, there was one scene where I was laying on my back and I was supposed to punch him while he was on me. Something about lifting my arm up flattened my spine onto the ground. That was an immediate pain. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Once again, every single one of these incidents, uh, incidents, is, yeah, <laughs> I was perfectly fine before. Um, I didn't, I don't have footage of this, but like, when I was like walking, I think I tripped on my shoe or something and I fell. That hurt a lot. It's one of the reasons why I don't think I can get tackled. I don't know, falling in general is just really scary for me now. Um, like, I used to do it a lot, too, for videos and stuff, but I'm kind of scared to do it now. Man, I got a big fight scene coming up in a few months. And I'm, like, planning... Uh, I'll be fine. I'm, like, planning to throw myself onto tables and stuff. Oh, jeez. I'll be fine. This might not make sense, because the whole purpose of the surgery was to straighten my spine. But to be completely fair, it's not completely straight because our spines can't be completely straight. Uh, we're supposed to have a little bit of a curve. But anyways, there's this concrete slide that we go to. Um, it's really fun, it's really cool. Um, it's been on my TikTok before. But all my friends were laying straight on their back and sliding down. I tried to do it and almost died. <laughs> I don't know, the flat concrete sh straightening out my spine just did not feel great. Anyways, let's talk about the before and afters. Cause I keep talking about all this pain that like I have sometimes. And like one of the big points of having the surgery was to not feel pain anymore. Uh, this is another thing that I've discussed on TikTok, but I'm gonna try to re-explain it here. Yes, I still have some pain. But before the surgery, like I said earlier, I could barely do anything for too long without my spine just hurting. Like, I was resting a lot. Everything was torturous. Before I got the surgery, what Dr. Anderson said was, there's a chance 
that this might not make you feel better, but it also can't make you feel worse. So after you're all healed and everything, there's no way you're gonna feel worse than you did before you had it done. So I was like, you know, I'll take that chance. Um, and you know, I do feel better. Like I said, I am scared to do a lot of things now, um, but that's just gonna take time for me to get used to and also, and also just stop being like a pussy about, cause I'm sure there's a lot of things that I'm like refusing to do that I'm like perfectly fine to do now, but I'm just so scared that I'm gonna be wrong, you know? But yeah, since the surgery, other than all of the healing and stuff, I'm able to stand longer, I'm able to walk longer, I'm able to sleep longer, I'm able to sit down longer. Like obviously I have bad days where I just feel terrible and I feel a lot more sharp pains than I would like to feel sometimes. But I prefer this occasional pain every once in a while so much more than the constant pain that I had before. If that makes sense. Um, like if that scares you away from the surgery, just the idea of still having pain, then you know, that's your choice and everything, but it did help. It does get a little bit difficult on days where I like really overwork myself. Um, like when I was doing the stage scene in Edna Swan, we got up at like 10 a.m., maybe 11, I don't know. It, it was really early in the morning and we immediately carried this big, huge like thing that I built across the street. Um, put it back together. I was up on ladders, just like screwing it together and everything. I had to carry these heavy benches over there. I, the whole day was just me standing, getting the costumes ready, putting on my fake nose, spending the entire day standing behind a camera, having to move things around. There was a lot of other stressful things that day, which I don't need to get into right now because they're not important, but I'll talk about them another time. But by the end of the day, I, I could not help them clean everything up. And by clean everything up, I mean take the stage back down and move it back across the street. I tried to. I tried so, so, so hard, but everyone saw that I was just dying inside and they made me go inside. I felt really bad. I'm at the point where I can't even do what I love without almost killing myself every time. There are occasional days like that, but that's when I really work myself to the bone. So maybe if you're someone who does a lot physically or whatever, it might not be good for you. But also I'm just not fit in general. Like I'm not skinny. I <laughs> didn't do much physical activities growing up. I'm not that healthy and maybe that has a big part in it. Maybe if I lost a bunch of weight and got ripped and everything and strong, maybe the end of the day wouldn't kill me as much. But yeah, I don't know. I don't want you guys to like 100% quote me on anything that I'm saying in this because every single person is different. Everyone's experience is going to be different. I'm just saying how it was for me. But that's still a big upgrade from where I was at before the surgery. Feeling all that pain at the end of the day after I'm done doing everything that I'm doing is a big difference than feeling the pain during everything. Like I definitely have a lot of, oh, I'm going to feel this tonight situations. And before it was more of a, I feel this right now. <laughs> I don't know, it does worry me for the future though. For those of you who don't know, I've never had it like an actual job. I've done like photography jobs and stuff, but that's not like a job job. Like I was paid, but it's not like something I do all the time. I've never had like a full on job. And it does really scare me. I can deal with those occasional days where I just want to die at the end of the day. But I just don't know what actually working every single day is going to do to me. Like ending every single night feeling like I was just chewed up and spit out into a drain and then and then pulled out with one of those snake things and then thrown into the trash and then... You get what I'm saying. I don't know, it does worry me. When I ever do finally work somewhere. 
I'll find a way to update you guys on how that goes for me. But for now, I just don't know. Now, I'm only able to really tell you what I know about myself. But just to give you, like, another perspective on this surgery, I'm not going to say her name because I don't know if she's okay with that. And I don't really feel like asking her right now anyways. But one, one girl did message me pretty shortly after I posted my vlog about the surgery. Um, she just asked me a bunch of questions about it. She said that she was going to have it done herself. Um, I told her how I was feeling at that moment in time. I told her everything that I've told you guys. Um, and she said, cool, thank you. Um, and then like a little bit later, I messaged her. And I was like, hey, did you ever get that surgery? How you feel? And um, she messaged me back and she was like, I feel absolutely terrible. I'm in the worst pain I've ever been in. I just want to die, all this other stuff. And I felt so fucking bad. I was like, man, like I know everyone's experiences are gonna be different, but, and she was probably gonna get the surgery no matter what, but I can't help but think I was the one that convinced her to do it. And I told her everything's gonna be fine. But a few months later, I checked back with her again and I said, how are you doing now? And she said, oh, Sometimes I forget I even got surgery, and I'm like, thank God. So yeah, I can't exactly tell you how much pain you're going to be in. I think one thing's for sure. It will work out in the end. Because I also, I can't even tell that I had surgery right now. At all. I think it was worth it in the end. Anyways, let's talk about mobility and flexibility. I think mobility is the right word, is that right? Or is that, sounds like a word you use with cars. Mobility, I don't know. Um, a lot of people ask me, or a few people maybe, but I have been asked how well I move now. And this is something I worried about too before I had the surgery. I was even watching YouTube videos to see how other people were. Um, I don't feel a difference in how I move. Like obviously, I can't bend the same way I used to, but it's not like a noticeable feeling, if that makes sense. Um, they didn't put metal on my lower back, and that's probably part of the reason why I can still move just fine. Um, I think one of the only, other than not being able to get into a car very well in the beginning, the only thing I've really actually noticed is I've recently started going to the gym and there's these machines to you need to be able to bend over and stuff. I literally can't do it. My back will not bend. I also don't think I can do a curl up um, or sit ups. It's just difficult. When you're at the gym trying to work out your entire body, but you can't do any of the torso themed exercises because there's a metal rod in your spine and you physically cannot bend. I've answered this many times, but I know someone who hasn't seen those videos is probably going to ask it. I didn't actually gain any inches in my height. Um, before the surgery, I was very much a sloucher. I was always hunched over in some way. Um, but if I were to sit up completely straight, I was the same height that I am now. Um, so after the surgery, they just permanently straightened my spine. So now I literally cannot hunch anymore. I mean, I can do little things, but nothing like I used to. Um, Cause I remember I posted a video of me standing for the first time and everyone was super shocked at how tall I was. I wasn't any taller. It was just, Everyone was just so used to me slouching so much that just seeing me immediately stand up that tall, it was, it was just a big surprise for people. Even I felt like I might have been taller, but I wasn't. I have read some comments from people saying that they did gain some height, but I just didn't. <laughs> for those of you wondering, I am 6'4". Back to the pain side of things, um, I will say that a lot of my back pain actually comes from my lower spine now. 
the part of my spine that they didn't do anything to is where I hurt usually the most. My actual main area that they attached the metal to, barely ever anything. Even those sharp pain jolts that I was talking about earlier, I'm pretty sure most of those just came straight from my lower spine. I don't know if there's just a lot of stress on my lower spine now, being the only part of it that doesn't that didn't have anything done to it, or what, I don't know. I think I might have forgot to mention that my balls don't hurt anymore. I feel like that should be brought up. Now although I don't necessarily feel the limitations of my movement, I will say bending over is still not very fun for me. And this is another thing that's probably just like a me thing. But every time I try to like bend over, I can feel that heaviness on my spine and it's just very uncomfortable. And on top of that, clothes don't fit me right. So that just adds to the uncomfortableness. So the amazing people in my life, it's another thing I feel bad for, have constantly are helping me pick things up. Like I'll drop something and they'll immediately pick it up for me. And I'm like, thanks. And then there's been other times where I'm just so used to them doing that, that I'll drop something and then stare at it for three seconds and then they'll go and get it. I'm like, I would have picked it up. <laughs> but then I just look like a fucking liar because I just stared at it for three seconds. Like I really would have picked it up. It was just, <laughs> it's been a while since I've picked something up. Now I have heard a lot of stories about people saying that once they have like a piece of metal in them, they're able to tell when the temperature temperature is gonna change or when it's gonna rain and stuff. I don't really know if that's the case for me. Like there are occasions where I'm like, is this what people are talking about with that? Like, I'll just have like this really weird feeling in me. I'm just like, well, it did just get freezing. <laughs> I don't know, I can't tell. I really can't. I mean, maybe it's a real thing and it's there, but I'm just, I don't know how to control it or like understand what it means, so. Like, I would love to just walk outside and be like, it's gonna rain today. <laughs> and it not be because the clouds are black or something. And then to have someone else be like, oh, what do you mean? It looks nice out. And just be like, my spine told me the scar healed pretty nicely. Um, I have no doubt that in the next few years it'll be practically invisible but um i forgot what it was called but it did heal weird in one spot like there's just this like purplish sometimes black circle in the middle of part of it um someone said it was someone said it was very normal for scars and stuff something about the skin just healing weird i don't know but i hate it and i hope i can get it removed someday uh, yeah, I'm gonna try the best I can to show you guys the scar right now. I don't know how I'm gonna do it in this position or with this lighting, but I'll try my best. I'm probably just gonna end up playing the TikTok that I did because I feel like it shows it the best, uh, but I'll try. Also, all the nerves in my upper back are kind of dead now. Um, I've regained some feeling in the last three years, but for the most part, it has been numb. So people would like touch it and I wouldn't even know. Uh, yeah, it's not a big issue. It's kind of cool. I don't know. Uh. So you probably can't see anything, huh? It stops like right around here. And then right here is that thing I was talking about. Uh, it's really disgusting looking. So I just looked at that footage and I guess you could see it a lot better than I thought you'd be able to, but I'm still gonna play that TikTok, cause why not? 
It's doing a pretty good job of fading away. I think the only issue I really have is this little spot right here. But yeah, if you are thinking about the surgery and you think it would benefit you in any type of way, then I definitely think you should go for it. Of course, take into consideration everything that I've said here. And remember that your experience might not be the same as mine. But if you decide to get it, you're more than welcome to become pen pals with me on Instagram or something. Um, I will gladly talk with you throughout your process. Once again, I apologize for how all over the place this video is. I kind of feel like it's half-assed now, because I was... Whenever I thought about making this video, I was expecting some, like, big, huge thing. Like, documentary, like, documentary, like, type video, or whatever. But then, like, I actually get in front of the camera, and it's just... Really nothing new to add, it's just... It's, it's just a big, huge video about a bunch of things I've already talked about. And a couple things that I might not have ever talked about. But I hope it still helped in some way. Or for those of you that were just curious about it in general, I hope... I hope I explained it good enough. Like I said, I will still gladly answer more questions if you have any. You can either comment them below, message me privately, or even just ask them on TikTok, and I'll try to answer them. I just remembered another thing that I got asked a couple times, and that was how much it costed. And that's another thing I can't really tell you. I don't want to like sound like I'm like bragging or whatever. But, I mean, like mine was paid for with insurance. Um, I know a lot of people aren't that fortunate. But I can say I think it's a lot. <laughs> um, so if that's like another issue you have with getting the surgery, then I'm sorry for just being like, yeah, you should totally go and get it. Um, if you're unable to, I'm, I, I'm very sorry. But a big thank you to every single person who has helped me in the last three years and supported me. Making sure I was comfortable, making sure I wasn't in pain. It meant a lot and I'm sorry that I'm annoying about it sometimes. Not much really happens to me, so when something does, I make sure no one ever forgets it. <laughs> and a big thank you to everyone online who's been so nice too. When I posted that original vlog, I didn't expect to become this like spokesperson about it. I didn't expect to help so many people. <laughs> Kinda wish the power was given to someone who was able to talk better. But it still has been cool seeing the amount of emails and DMs and stuff from people that were like me. Having people just trust me like that, it's been nice. And I hope to the people that I haven't kept contact with, I hope your surgeries went well too if you had them. I love you all. This has been a shitty video, and I'm sorry, but thank you for sticking through it. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, but yeah, this is the kid with the metal spine signing off. I'm 20 now. I'm not a kid. Whatever, I'm still a cyborg. <laughs>